So uh, welcome to the second part, which is accrual accounting and income uh, in which we just focus on recording adjusting entries, journal entries. Now, why do we need for the adjustment? As I mentioned, we have to match uh, the revenues and expenses. So there are some uh, revenues we, uh, we earned in this period, but not yet received. So we have to recognize that. Uh, there are many expenses which we incurred, but not yet paid. We have to recognize that. We have to recognize the wear and tear of our assets as a depreciation and a few more things that we have to uh, adjust. And th that's why we call it as an adjusting entries in order to match the revenue and the expenses of the same period. So financial statement issued at a end of a period and several accounts on a trial balance need to be brought up to date. So to make it up to date, to make it exactly for the same period. So certain transactions have not yet been recorded. So what we have to do, there are three types of adjusting entries, three types of. Two adjusting entries are from deferrals. Deferral means that uh, we paid something in advance or we received something in advance. Uh, one entry is related to depreciation. That's what we call it as an adjusting entry. So overall, there are five adjusting entries, two from deferrals, one from depreciation and two from accruals. Now, as I say deferral, business has paid or received cash in advance. So if we pay something in advance, so, and it is for the rent of a next year, January or a February or a March, that expense is not the expense of this year. So we cannot include that. So prepaid expenses record as an asset when purchased and expensed when they used or consumed. So we have to record as an asset, prepaid rent, prepaid uh, um, wages or prepaid, anything which we pay in advance is going to be recorded as an asset first. And then out of that asset, how much is consumed by the end of the year or by the end of our accounting period, we have to rec recognize it as an expense. Then comes unearned revenue record as a liability unearned revenue like we received something in advance by our customers uh, but things are not delivered the products or services are not yet provided so we report it as a liability and we call it as an unearned revenue or uh, and when out of this unearned revenue which is a liability uh, we have to calculate it how much is earned during that period so we pass that adjusting entry uh, depreciation is an uh, allocation, uh, allocate cost of plant assets to expense over useful lives, uh, represents wear and tear of subsidence. Basically, uh, the depreciation is, uh, in general terms, we call it as a wear and tear of the assets. But in reality, it is the spreading of the cost of the asset over a useful life. For example, you buy a car for a business and the life of the car is five years. So now, what is our job is, should we charge the cost of a car during the first year in which we purchase it? No. And tax authorities also not allow us. What they allow us that you have to spread the cost of this car over a five years because the useful year, uh, useful years for this car is five years. So we spread it over the five year and we're gonna charge, uh, like if the cost of the car is 50,000, so we're gonna charge 10,000 each year. So this is what we call it as a depreciation spreading the cost of assets or a fixed assets over its useful life uh, normally the depreciation is going to be charged on buildings equipments furnitures computers all these uh, uh, fixtures fitting and fixtures uh, and all the things that we uh, machinery equipment tools so these are going to be charged as a depreciation. Only the land is not going to be depreciated because land has a no wear and tear on it. And that. Uh, the, the third thing is accruals, uh, accrued expenses. Uh, the expenses incurred but not yet paid. Uh, so record expenses before paying cash, salaries, interest and income taxes. These are the things that we record it as a payable. And then later on in the next period, we're going to pay it. Uh, accrued revenue. Uh, record revenue which we earned but not yet received so we record it as a uh, uh, um, uh, earned and will not collect uh, will collect next period but not yet collect in this period 
so we call it as an accrued revenue so the important thing is there are two entries we call, we pass for deferral one is related to expense the other one is related to revenue the uh, uh, the third entry is for depreciation which is for all fixed assets and the the third one is accrual and accrual is again also related one is related to the uh, expense and one is related to the revenue so here is a case record an asset with when uh, paid in advance so what we did we paid rent in advance for three months so we we see here we write it prepaid rent debit because it's a recording of entry and cash and credit with the three thousand uh, we buy also supplies for um, 700 and pay cash for this so these are the two assets which are consumed over the period now this is an entry on the june june, uh, june 1st now on june 30th if we want to pass an entry what entry we're going to pass it to adjust it because one month passed so it means we on june 1st we recognize it as an asset but on 30th june that asset is used one portion because that's for a three months so one portion of that asset is used so what we do rent expense debit prepaid rent credit supplies expense debit supplies credit so that's are related to prepaid expenses and these are the t accounts of a prepaid rent so prepaid rent was started with 3000 but after a one month uh, it's credited with 1000 so ultimately the balance is reduced to 2000 and rent expenses at the end of the uh, period which is 1000 supplies also have the same thing like here we are so supplies started with 700 so during the month we consume 300 so uh, balance is 400 uh, supplies and the supplies expenses of uh, 300 depreciation depreciation is very simple very straightforward entries whenever there is a depreciation entry we have a same uh, entry like uh, whatever the asset uh, is so here we are buying an asset so we are buying equipment uh, of our 24,000 and we are buying on credit so we are mentioning here accounts payable on June 30th, uh, after one month's use of the asset, what we do, we charge depreciation and we are saying depreciation expense debit equipment and the credit is accumulated depreciation. Now, this is a point here. I want to make it clear uh, that why we charge accumulated depreciation uh, because this is a contra account, contra account to the asset. Uh, there is a rule that uh, when we record the uh, assets we always record the assets as at, at its historical cost the the cost what we paid to buy it so we keep that amount as it is like if you buy a car for 50,000 you report it all the time uh, in coming years as a 50,000 car 50,000 but there is a contra account we call it as an accumulated depreciation on car that is going to increase every year by 10,000 so 10,000 uh, in the first year and then it's, uh, this balance of accumulated depreciation is going to increase by 20,000 and then uh, 30,000 then 40,000 so this is called as a contra asset account so whenever we want to know what is a book value or the net value of asset like a car or any other asset so what we do we take that asset subtract the accumulated depreciation that is going to be our net value now, how do we calculate the depreciation here? So the useful life of this equipment is five years. So we divide this 24,000 with a five. So it comes to 4,800 per year. But we are here charging depreciation for one month. So we again divide it with the 12 and by this way we get it 400. So this is what uh, I explained. So equipment 24,000, depreciation expense is 400 and accumulated depreciation is 400 so we are not reducing this here what we are doing we are creating a contra account and that's accumulated depreciation so accumulated depreciation sum of all the depreciation expenses increase over assets life and this is what we call it as a contra asset account because the net value of the asset is always assets minus accumulated depreciation normally this uh, accumulated depreciation has a credit balance uh, companion uh, account is asset and carrying amount of any asset is asset minus accumulated depreciation that is going to be the 
so here you see that equipment 24,000 minus accumulated depreciation so this one is called as a carrying value of the uh, equipment uh, so we discuss uh, prepaid entries then we will discuss depreciation now accrued expenses uh, expenses incurred before uh, cash is paid so result in a liability and it can be a salaries expense interest expense and so here is an example like if the uh, the firm is paying uh, uh, wages on uh, half monthly basis like uh, every uh, half month like 15 and 30th so there is a possibility that the closing comes uh, or the close of the month comes different than um, that uh, so if uh, if a firm is paying uh, wages on uh, bi-weekly basis so bi-weekly can come uh, different than the third uh, 50 uh, 15th and the 30th so in that case what is going to happen there is a chance that you have to recognize uh, some uh, liability as a payable so here we see that salaries expense debit cash credit uh, and salaries expense debit on 30th june why because the day of the salary is going to be different so salaries payable is going to so salaries payable and salaries expense it's a uh, it's a 900 sorry it's a 900 So accrued revenue, revenue earned but not uh, yet received, increase receivable and revenue. So accounts receivable debit, services revenue, credit. Unearned revenue received cash before uh, revenue is earned and created a liability. So cash, debit, unearned revenue, uh, credit. And then uh, we can say unearned revenue, debit and revenue, credit. So what we have to do here that we have a, as I mentioned, there are five entries, uh, two for, for prepaid and two for uh, accruals and then one for depreciation. So prepaid expense, the first entry for prepaid expense, which is general entry, not an adjusting entry, is prepaid expense debit, cash credit. What later on, what is an adjusting entry? Expense debit and prepaid expense credit. For unearned revenue, uh, for general, general general entry is cash debit unearned revenue credit but at the closing time what we have to do what we have to adjust out of this unearned revenue how much is earned is going to be da uh, uh, debit unearned revenue and credit revenue accrued expenses expense debit payable cre credit and then we have to payable into cash that's a later accrued revenue receivable debit revenue credit and then cash and receivable and two purpose of adjusting process measure income correctly because the the income should be measured in a way that uh, follow the matching principle and update the balance sheet because you know these uh, assets like prepaid expense uh, unearned revenue is a liability uh, and uh, payable and receivable these are assets uh, liabilities and assets so it should be report on the balance sheet correctly. So measure income correctly as well as report the assets and liabilities correctly in the balance sheet. Every adjusting entry affects at least one of the revenue or expense and asset or the liability. So if you look at these, uh, all the uh, four entries, uh, we see that uh, every time there is a debit, either is a cash or a, uh, revenue or an expense or uh, asset or a liability so now you have to learn uh, in a very summar uh, summarized form prepaid expense uh, debit uh, and credit asset so that's uh, depreciation expense and contra asset accrued expense expense and liabilities accrued revenue assets and revenue and unearned revenue liabilities and revenue now here is an example through which we go over and try to understand. Clark Motors Limited faces the following situation. Generalize the adjusting entries needed at December 31st, 2014 for each situation. Consider each fact separately. And the first fact is the business has an interest expense of 9,000 that is must pay early in the January 2015. So it means it is an expense, right? which is accrued 
right accrued expense so what we have to do interest expense debit and interest payable credit and the amount is 9000 Interest revenue of 3,000 has been earned but not yet received. So, interest receivable debit and interest revenue credit and the amount is 3,000. When the business collected um, uh, 12,000 in advance it debit cash and credit but that was already done like unearned revenue and cash cash debit and unearned revenue credit so when the business collected in advance it debited so it's it's in the past cash debit and unearned revenue credit the client paying for two cars one delivered in December one of uh, one to be delivered in February so the one delivered it means half of it is going to be provided services so what we do we uh, because we already credit unearned revenue so we debited unearned revenue as an adjusting entry and credit revenue and the amount is 6000 because half of the out of two cars we are assuming that the cars of a equal value so uh 12000 6000 is going to be so you see here uh, more uh, simple way and more clearly interest expense debit interest payable credit interest receivable debit interest revenue credit unearned revenue debit and revenue credit salary expense is 1000 per day monday through friday and the businesses pays employees each friday this year december 31st falls on a tuesday so now this is a, a two day salaries which are payable on December 31st. Not yet paid, but it is payable. So what entry we're gonna pass? Salaries expense debit, salaries payable credit. So, uh, the unadjusted balance of a supplies account is 3,100. The total cost of the supplies on hand is 800. So it's gonna be uh, we, what we do. Supplies expense debit and supplies credit with a 23,000 uh, 2300 now why how do we get it 2300 because in the beginning we have a this much supplies but at the end we have a this much supply so it means the difference is consumed so we that's why we are su charging supplies expense debit and supplies credit with a 2300 two, 2300 equipment was purchased uh, at the beginning of this year, at the cost of 60,000, the equipment useful life is five years. There is no residual. So what entry we're going to pass? Uh, depreciation expense debit and accumulated depreciation credit. And the, uh, then the value is of 12,000. Right? Why? Because 60 divided by 5 is 12,000. Uh, this is a uh, this one is our equipment sixty thousand. This is our depreciation, so this is going to be carrying value, uh, carrying amount. So uh, in the uh, in the last chapter, chapter number two, we discuss trial balance. After trial balance, we do these five adjusting entries. When we do these five adjusting entries and report these adjusting entries into our trial balance we call it as an adjusted trial balance. So trial balance, adjusting entries, and then finally we get it an adjusted trial balance. Prepared after adjustments are generalized and posted, useful step is preparing financial. So we will start preparing financial statements from the adjusted trial balance. But there is a one more step in the mall between that. And this is what we call it as a closing of a trial balance. So we will see in our next part about the closing of the trial balance.